Blade Runner 2049 brings us back into the dark cyberpunk dystopian world of Ridley Scott's adaptation of Blade Runner. However, the cities in both films look drastically different from one another. When you compare them side to side, Blade Runner's skyline looks brighter and more lively to a degree, while Blade Runner 2049's skyline looks way more dead, dark, and ominous. And today I'm going to quickly explain why 2049's Los Angeles is so much darker than the original Blade Runner's. So with that said, here we go. In 2049, the skyline of Los Angeles is dark. The only lit up parts of civilization that we see are in the slivers of the city and parts leading down to the main streets. The surrounding buildings are black with barely any light coming from them, and the light pollution is very minimal from the streets as well. And when K is flying back into the city, the only other spinner we see is a police vehicle. So why is that? Resources are scarce in 2049. K takes a one second shower of 99.9% .9 non-contaminated water. The shower only lasts one second, showing us how clean water cannot be wasted. One of the rarest things in their society is a small wooden horse. Something like wood is nearly impossible to find. In Chinatown, Mariette catches Kay looking at a picture of the tree Rachel was buried under, and Mariette points out that she's never actually seen a real tree before. It's also said from one of the coolest merchants in any sci-fi film that if Kay sold the small wooden horse, it would be enough to buy him a real horse. On top of that, think how expensive that real horse would be. When was the last time you saw a horse or any other animal in the Blade Runner universe that wasn't in Deckard's dream sequence and didn't have a horn attached to his head, or a dog. And even at that point, Kay questions whether or not the dog was real. Most of the ways people get their food is through something like a protein farm Sapper was working on, as it was part of the other farms owned by Wallace that cured the food crisis. My point is, it's a lot of money for any livestock, water, or anything basic that we have a surplus of nowadays. 2049 society has the minimal amount of resources, way less than Blade Runner 2019, and all the this has to do with one event. We know that the world of Blade Runner was slowly in decline. Los Angeles was not looking good, and most of the advertisements we saw on the screens floating above the city were encouraging people to go to the off-world colonies. But there is a great short film that was released before Blade Runner 2049 was in theaters. It was an anime going into the event called The Blackout of 2022, which told the story of a rogue group of replicants setting off an EMP so powerful that it shut down the west coast of the United States. It caused an insane amount of death and destruction in Los Angeles causing most of their society to come to a grinding halt. And the main intent of this attack was to scramble the records of the replicants so they can go off the grid. We see this in 2049 when Kay is looking through the old files obtained by Wallace from the Tyrell Corporation. Kay can only see fragments of the archives, and the file clerk even mentions that anything pre-blackout is hard to find, because literally everything was damaged. Just like the databases, the cities were also permanently damaged. And Los Angeles, along with the entire West Coast, is still recovering from the blackout of 2022. Yet after 20 something years, you would assume there would be a significant recovery. But this is a world where no human really wants to live. Most people are abandoning ship and leaving. And side note, I'm going to go ahead and safely assume that the blackout of 2022 was in good relation to the resistance movement we saw forming in 2049 and how Freza may have played a big part in planning it so she could get other replicants off the grid in order to form this kind of rebellion. Either way, this event gives us more of an understanding as to why the humans harass K at work, calling him a skin job, and the neighbors vandalizing his door with the same derogatory phrases. People show so much more hatred towards the replicants than they used to, because they are still affected from an attack by them, and are prejudiced towards all replicants, holding them all responsible for the blackout. With the darker atmosphere of the city, it's also interesting to point out how there's an extreme lack of spinners in the sky. There are just a few that can be spotted on the foggy skyline. The only characters we see with spinners are K and Love, mainly because K is a Blade Runner and serves an authoritative organization. Love works for Wallace, one of the most powerful humans on Earth. You'd either have to be extremely rich or a cop to be flying around in a spinner, mainly because the resources are so scarce that the average human living in the city is probably too focused on survival, and wouldn't even think about trying to obtain a spinner because it would be such an unrealistic goal. After the EMP, most of the ships could also have been destroyed mid-flight, and for those that did survive, the richer people who would be driving and buying the spinners must have gone off-world at that point, further contributing to the scarce of them. So that was my quick explanation as to why these two films had such drastically different skylines. And if you guys like this video and love sci-fi analysis, please subscribe to support this channel so I can keep making videos like this about Blade Runner and other sci-fi films. And if you haven't yet checked out the Blade Runner 2049 prequel short films, I highly recommend you go check them out. They're only like 20 minutes in total and they give you some great insight into the Blade Runner universe. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next Blade Runner.
Blade Runner 2049 analysis.